So today, we are reading uh, Jeremiah chapter 47, starting from Jeremiah 46. It talks on the judgment on nations. So yesterday, it was the na judgment on nations. And today, the judgment came to Philistines. So verse 1 tells us the background of it. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet against the Philistines before Pharaoh attacked Gaza. Now, Gaza was one of the four major cities of Philistines at that time. And then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet. So it's not easy to pinpoint the time when it is written. So when was Pharaoh attack Gaza? When did Pharaoh attack him? Okay, I need to tell you the background history of it. So it was the time of Jehoiakim. Assyria was on the fall, was declining. And then Babylon was on the rise. So Assyria was on the fall, was declining, and then Babylon was on the rise, and then Egypt on the south was kind of like trying to get the power. So Babylon was on the rise, and then Egypt was trying to be the superpower in the Middle East. Geographically, so Babylon was attacking from the east to the north, uh, northwest, attacking Assyria. Nico, the pharaoh of uh, Egypt, wanted to uh, a join hand with Assyria to attack Babylon. So we know that uh, jo jo Joas. <coughs> He was trying to resist Nero, the king of e uh, Pharaoh, so that he was un that Egypt was not able to attack Assyria, but he was killed. <coughs> so Nero just go went up and then. Uh, that's what ha we declare in um, last chapter. That there was a time they were going to battle against uh, Babylon. And that's when Babylonian king attack fought against uh, Egypt. The 605 BC. Because uh, Nico, Nico, the uh, pharaoh of Egypt, was on the way to attack Babylon, they, uh, they, they had to go through Gaza, and that's when they attacked Gaza. But then some uh, scholars were questioning, maybe they were rushing to join hand with Assyria. They may not be the time. But another possible time was... that when the Egypt was defeated by Babylonian king and, and Nebuchadnezzar, and then the Egypt army returned to Egypt. Now, on the way, they may attack Philistines when they were going back to Egypt. And then they went back all the way to the east side of Egypt. 
But the Babylonian army was chasing after the Egyptian army. And then Babylon, Babylon took quite a few important cities of Egypt, including Ashdod, Ashdod of uh, Philistine, and Ashkelon or Ikaron. That means what they did, when they go through a city, they will burn down the whole city all the way to the east coast of Egypt. And there they also fought against the Pharaoh. But that time, Babylonian army was defeated. So when Pharaoh was counter-attacking, and that's why they attacked Gaza. But uh, chronologically, it's really close to each other. So maybe in the span of a couple of years. But at that time, Babylon was defeated, right? Quite. So Jehoiakim thought that maybe there was a chance for Egypt to rise. So maybe Babylon would not be the champion of the Middle East. That's why Jehoiakim rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar. But of course, then they were attacked by uh, Nebuchadnezzar again. And then Nebuchadnezzar wanted to attack Egypt again. There was another time. They also went past the land of Philistines. and brought destruction on those cities. Whichever time period we are talking about, the Philistine was the effect destroyed, damaged by Babylon from the north. And then in verse 2, waters rise out of the north. That's verse 2. and shall be an overflowing flood. They shall overflow the land and all that is in it. The city and those dwell within it, and the man shall cry. So within seven years, they have the, you know, they have the battles going through from north to south, south to north, and then uh, the Philistines will have been affected. The Philistine was trying to get help from Egypt. Uh, in history, the last king of Philistine, Adon, wrote to Egypt asking for help. But Egypt did not send any help, and at the end, Philistine was taken down. That's what the prophecy of Jeremiah recorded here. Verse 4. So we can see that different countries was trying to, were trying to get to be the champion. And then verse 4, it says here, So that the Philistine was defeated, they want to return, and then they were they were uh, defeated again. And then somehow Philistines disappear from the history. Why? Does it mean that they were just being the the defeat, the loot in the because of the two? The, the power struggle, but Jeremiah tells us otherwise. Verse 4, because of the day that comes to plunder all the Philistines, to cut off from Tyre and Sidon every helper who remains. 
for the Lord shall plunder the Philistine, the remnant of the country of capital. This is the act of God. God wants to do that. That they were those who came from the remnant of the country of capital, the islands. And the Philistine helped the Sidon and Tyra. Sidon and Tyra. So we can tell, we can see that it's actually uh, the hand of God that made all this happen. But why did God want to judge Philistines? From other, from the books of other prophets, we know the judgment on uh, the Philistines. Book of Job, Book of Amos prophesies that the judgment of God will come upon uh, Philistines. Uh, Joel, book of Joel, chapter 3, verse 4 to 6. Indeed, what have you do to me, with me, O Tyre and Sidon, and all the coast of Philistia, Philistia, Philistia? Will you retaliate against me? But if you retaliate against me swiftly and speedily, I will return your retaliation upon your own head. Joel, book of Joel, verse 3, verse 4. Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temple my prized possessions. Also the people of Judah and the people of Jerusalem you have sold to the Greeks that you may remove them far from their borders. They help, uh, they help Tyra and Sidon to, to take the people of Judah away from their land. And then they were human trafficking these people through the to the Tyre and Sidon. And then they have taken away the silver and the gold of the land of Judah. And that's in uh, Amos. Chapter 1, verse 6, it mentioned. That says, The law for three transactions of Gaza and for four I will not turn away the, is punishment because they took captive the whole captivity to live, deliver them up to Edom. The Philistine was judged by God. Prophet is telling us here because they have taken the people of Judah as plunder. And then they're like opportunists. Why did they plunder and take uh, the people of Judah as loot? Because uh, at that time, the people of Judah was fighting against Ammon, Ammonites. They were because they were in a fight, so they were trying to just ambush them. And then go to the Sidon, Sidon and Tyra, and then they were doing for human trafficking. And then they were earning money, making money. And Sidon and Tyra, Tyra and Sidon, Is, uh, is they are the symbol, signs of uh, trading, commercial, and greed. They, were, they have this major city on the coast as well as an island. Or because they were like an, in an, as an island, they, they were quite resilient, people can. So they take pride in their geographical uh, location. Because of this, uh, the island, they are very good at sea trading. Because the Philistine did all this, they help uh, Tyra and Sidon. They seize opportunities and then harm God's chosen people. And that's why God judged them. So today, for us today, 
Hong Kong is also an island, isn't it? We are very famous for our trading. You say, we don't do human trafficking here. But do we exploit others so that we can gain more? Do we? We have a Chinese slang. Okay, they are like a work slaves. They are like they they love their work so much that they are being slave and they don't mind. But then it changed to something that because um, so at first it refers to people who willingly work for the company, but later on the saying changed to to saying that actually it's for those people who are being exploited, they're be, being slaves driven by their boss, by their employers. So today are we like the Philistines, that we oppress others, we exploit others? Do we do that? This is totally greatly displeasing to the Lord. And Ezekiel, who uh, like a similar time of uh, Jeremiah mentioned, that's Ezekiel 25 and then 15. The law said so. Because the Philistine we took revenge on Judah. They, ha they harbor anger forever in order to destroy them. And then verse 16, the Lord said, I will stretch out my hand and strike them. And then destroy all the remnants on the coast. The Philistine face such destruction, total destruction. One of another reason is they have uh, hatred against them to get uh, Ezekiel 25, verse 15 to 60, because they harbor the anger against Judah, against the Jews for a long, long time, because they their grudges happened during the time of judges. So they were fight, fighting against the tribes of Israel. So sometimes they win, sometimes they lose. And then when the first king of Judah, that's King Saul, and then King David, in the time of David, then uh, the the Jews, the Israel, were subduing, subduing the Philistines, and that's why. The, for the Philistine, they hold the grudges that win. So when Israel was on the fall and then they were divided into two kingdoms, then Philistine continued to fight against the uh, Jews. It's like taking vengeance. Maybe they say that, no, you treat us badly first, so that's why I'm taking revenge. But to God, this is not good. Because for the, they dealt vengefully and took vengeance with a spiteful heart. They decided to destroy the Jews. <coughs> so, a few years back when we faced, when the Hong Kong was going through the social movement, and many people were hurt because they were, their hope, their expectation was not fulfilled. And then they moved to different countries in the world because of that hurt. Look at the history of uh, Philistines. The Lord the Lord judged them because they hold old grudges and old hatreds. Yes, we have been hurt, but what should we do? If we cannot hold the grudges forever, what should we do? Well, the people of Israel were hurt badly too. 
who can take revenge for them? Do they have to act on their own behalf? Do they have to hold on to the holders? You do not rest if the people, you do not destroy those who hurt you. Does it mean that this is the right way? But here, God moved. Well, for the Philistines, they hold the old hatreds and then they kept fighting against the Israel. And at the end, they were destroyed totally by the judgment of God. But in comparison to uh, Israel, God said, I will, I will act. Those who hurt you, those who persecute you, you don't have to move your, by your own hand. God will move. God will, God will judge. God will act. So from this uh, book of uh, prophets, we know why the Philistines were judged. The last three verses, five, six, and seven, uh, end with three questions. Verse five, bonus has come upon Gaza. Askelon is cut off with the remnant of their valley. How long will you cut yourself? That's the end of the judgment from God through Jeremiah. So bonus has come upon Gaza as Kelon is cut off. And it means that they were mourning. After all, they faced destruction. But actually, they cut off themselves. Uh, they cut, it's cut off. So put yourself up into your scapegoat because they worship idols, they will cut their own self. We can see that when Elijah was facing the uh, prophets of Baal. So they were mourning, and then God said, how much longer? How much longer will you? How long will you cut yourself? Verse five. How long will you continue worshiping idols? Ezekiel chapter twenty-five, verse seventeen. It says that. I will execute great vengeance on them so that they shall know that I am the Lord. And now Jeremiah uh, 47, verse 6. Oh, you sword of the Lord, how long until you are quiet? This is the question raised by the Philistine. We need to stop. We need to stop. And then Jeremiah answered in verse 7, Seeing the Lord has given it a charge against Ashkelon and against the seesaw, there he has appointed it. How can it be quiet? It refers to the soul of the uh, Lord as well as the waters rising from the uh, north. Uh, all these refer to Babylon. So uh, they are rhetor ret rhetorical questions. When will the Philistines stop worshipping idols? And to the Philistines, they are asking, how long? How long will I have to be in agony and suffering? But the answers of uh, Jeremiah, God has appointed Babylon to attack, uh, attack uh, Ashkelon and the seesaw. How can it be stopped? How can it be quiet?
do we all only turn to God when we come to our dead end? We don't know if the Philistine were listening to this uh, judgment because it ended in ends here. From the history, we know that they have been taken away, uh, taken out of the history. So for for Jeremiah, who is he writing this to? Of course, they're not right. He's not writing to the Philistines. It's for the Jews at the time. At that time, Jews was not totally destroyed yet. So for the Jews, what does it mean to them? Verse seven. That there he has appointed it. It's also appear in Micah's six, chapter six, verse nine. Micah six nine. It says that the law cry out to the cities. Who has appointed the punishment of the rod? So here is also mean the uh, appointed. It tells us that we must fear God. You must hear the God who appoint all this sword and uh, the calamity. Do not fear God only when judgment comes. So now we look at the whole chapter. Basically, different nations were fighting for their powers, but God is the only one who rules. How should we respond to it? We do not rely on any power. But we must trust in God, just like last chapter when it talks about judgment on Egypt. Chapter forty-six, verse twenty-five, the Lord of Hosts, He say, "I will bring just punishment on Ammon, on Pharaoh, with their gods and their kings, Pharaoh and those who trust in him." The Philistine rely on Egypt. So they face such judgment. So Jeremiah again, God are telling Israelites. So they are not being sacrificed, but God is still in control. Do not trust in Egypt, because you will be destroyed. We must trust God. God is judge, and He judge all the land. God is judging even His people. So, for the injustice and unrighteousness of other nations, their sin, God will not ignore them. So we do not take revenge on their wrongdoings. We must believe that God is judge, and He will. God is just; He will judge. And God is faithful. So many prophets have prophesied that the first time will be judged because of their vengeance, because of their sins. <coughs> the prophecies happen here, and then many soon afterwards, two, within two or three years, the prophecy came to pass. God is faithful. God will bring to pass His own words. And today, when we live our own life, do we look at the? Do we just trust in those who are doing good? Do we rely on power or do we rely on God? 
is God in our life? When judgment comes, when we are in calamity, in judgment, in uh, distress, do we know where to, to fear God? May God bless his own words. That's the end of our message. God, I thank you that you tell us that you're always with us. Thank you for your word. Let's arise and worship our God. Jesus, you are the Lord of hosts. We exalt your name. Brothers and sisters, let's praise our God. God, you are faithful. You are just. You are the Lord of hosts. We trust you. Your justice, your righteousness shall come upon us. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. You are, you will lead us. We follow you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Please be seated. The scripture tells us that the Philistines exploit and oppress others. Maybe in your life that you were mistreated, exploited by others. Maybe it's in relationship or in a marketplace, in family. You feel like you are being oppressed. You have been treated uh, unfairly. If you have this experience, then you come to the front. If you feel like you have been mistreated, oppressed, persecuted, then come to the front. We want to pray for you. Maybe even your boss. That you feel like in relationship at work, you also been persecuted. Maybe brothers and sisters watching online, if you have this experience, you can also cry out to God. Today, God wants to set you free. God wants to set you free. Those who are sitting down, then just close your eyes. That maybe your friends and family were being exploited, persecuted, or mistreated, then you need you can pray for them. God doesn't like exploitation, and God will always oh, stand in a position. We pray for our family, pray for our workplace, that you may know anyone who have been persecuted, exploited. And then we pray for them as well. We ask the co workers to come to the front and pray for brothers and sisters who have come to the front. Jesus, may you release your love. You hear their cries. <coughs> they were exploited, persecuted, and hurt. And you will wipe away their tears. And then you may erase their painful memories. Or maybe we are praying for our friends and families. They were being exploited, oppressed, and hurt. We give them all to you, Jesus. By your punishment, we are healed. Your blood will cover everyone.
Jesus, you wipe away their tears, their hurt, take away their memories. You take away, take them away. I see that God, you hold the hand of all your child's hand, and then God is saying to you, my child, let go, let go. I will move, I will act. Let go, let go. When we we forgive those who have hurt us, who have persecuted us. Then you will do great things. Forgive each one who has hurt you. All the persecution, exploitation, unrighteousness, injustice. Let's all stand. Lord, we declare that you are God. You rule over all. When we look, read the news, we see many exploitation, oppression. We want to become the priests and the intercessors. When we see all this, we raise up our hands and then we cry out for you to rule. That you can be king over that land. So, brothers and sisters, in this chapter, that the Philistine was totally destroyed when they faced difficult difficulties. They worship idols because there were idols all around. Even though when financially they are struggling, they oppress other. They do human trafficking, but here in Hong Kong. We need to pray for Hong Kong. Two by two, we pray. Hong Kong is facing financial、uh, pressure. Many people lost their job. Hong Kong and China, how can we face this、uh, dilemma? Two by two, let's pray. Pray for Hong Kong. First of the first one, pray for Hong Kong. The second one. That the China policy will become the blessing to Hong Kong, to China. So pray for Hong Kong, pray for China.
Lord Jesus, we are made before you that we rely on our finance, Hong Kong people. And we look at our stock market. Hong Kong people will go into panic and then they're in deep fear. Right now, we pray for Hong Kong. Well, we don't want to be just like uh, the Philistines. They rely on Tyra and Sidon. That the people of Hong Kong will return to you. But each of us, we want to trust you. Today, as we pray for Hong Kong, each of us, our sense of security is not in our finance. It's not in the financial situation. We do not panic when we hear all the financial bad news. Our hearts find peace in you and you alone. Lord, we place our sense of security in you so that we may know that our finance is in your hand. You are the one who, who looked after us. Once again, we turn to you that we will lack nothing. Our security is in you. The Philistines turned to other political system. Then they were judged by God. But today we should not rely on any political policy. But once again, we turn our heart to you. You are our provider. You are our helper. Though we do not walk in the way of the Philistines, but we walk in the kingdom way. We have we choose God's way. So once and once again, we will experience your provision. We thank you. In these couple of weeks. Jeremiah talk about talks about uh, nations. So yesterday he talked about uh, Egypt, and today they, he talks uh, he talks about. Now we know that uh, Donald Trump took the presidency of U.S. We regardless of your feelings towards U.S. But right now God is still using U.S. Uh, because it's very highly influential. So two by two, so continue in your group. So group uh, number one, pray for U.S. Because of the election, there will be division, argument, dispute. We pray for the U.S. citizens. God alone is the way out, not the, the elected president. That uh, made the U.S. the American turn back to God. They do not rely on finance or military. And number two, pray for the elected uh, government. May God use these governments so that it will become the channel of peace in the war. God will use this government. That the peace of God will come. And they will have godly policy. Let's all rise and then two by two. Number one, pray for America to turn back to God. And then number two, pray for the that their policy. They will fear God, they will follow God.
We pray for every <coughs> all the Americans. <coughs> All the shaking and ease, may they be stopped. You are their way out. You are their true peace. Your bloodline surround surround U.S. May the U.S. government become a government that fears God. When the result is this, we pray for the new government. The, the whole cabinet, the whole team, they will fear God. Their policy will be based on godly values. They will bring peace to the world. Nations is in your hands. You bless all these relationship. All the relationship will return to you. Everyone will come to know you. Thank you in Jesus' name. Let's declare loudly. Lord, we welcome you in twenty twenty four. Only two months left. Effortless 2024. Have we been effortless? Two months left. What else should I be effortless about? I should be quiet before God. And know that be still and know that you are God. Let's be quiet. And put your hand over your heart. The past ten months, do I truly know that I have this God? Do I truly rely on our oh my God, or I look at the situation? And I will see. Difficulties, enemies, or obstacles. This year, you told us. We need to run into your fortress, that we may find security. You will give us peace. In the past ten months, I'm unable to re relax. I can't re let go. I still rely on myself. Lord, may you help us. 
in the last two months of 2024, I can relax and trust in you totally. Do not be afraid because you will move and you will you will accomplish. Thank you. Thank you. Let's receive blessing. You will do what you purpose to do in our lives. In the name of Jesus, I bless everyone here. Be bold to end courage, faith, bravery enter us because we have God, that we have this God and the God who loves us. And He loves us to the end, protect us to the end. In the name of Jesus, I declare, everyone will enter into your fortress. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.